friends, this is Janine Pettit, founder of Girl Camper and brand ambassador for Go RVing. I hope everybody is heading into a great weekend and I hope some of you in the warmer states are heading out in your RVs. You know, today we were talking around the office here at Girl Camper about the many ways in which we use our RVs when we're not RVing. And we've been doing a lot of that lately and it just conjured up some great memories for me. I wanna go backwards a little here and tell you a little bit about my own story. So in 2006, I finally got it in my head that my husband was never gonna RV with me. And it occurred to me, I didn't need a man to go RVing. It would have been nice and he once in a while goes with me now, but I got it in my head to just buy myself a little RV, something like this. This is actually my granddaughter's toy, which I pulled down here for a prop today. But I got it in my head that I was just gonna get my own RV and I bought this little RV and I started having so much fun with my girlfriends. A weekend here, a weekend there, even once in a blue moon, three, four, five days by myself. And I enjoyed that RV so much. But I was thinking today about all the ways in which we use that RV as a family when we weren't RVing. So I know there's a lot of new people coming into the whole RV world and we welcome you and we want to help you get where you're going and we want to help you make the most of your investment as well. So I thought I'd jump on here today and share some of the ways our whole family had benefited from owning the mommy's RV because it was totally mine. I bought it with my money and I owned it and loved it and it was my room to myself. So that's number one. When you have an RV on your property, and I was lucky enough to have mine on my property, it was just a great go-to. It was a time out for me. When I had all my kids at home and the dog and we lived on a little farm and I just wanted to check out, I would head out to that RV in the backyard and just pull the shades down and I could hear my kids yelling, Mom, Mom, I wouldn't answer. <laughs> it was just a great time out. But with my kids as well, I really use that RV as a little respite place, a place to have one-on-one -on -one time with mom. I can remember when my youngest was in fifth grade. It seemed like every day it was a tug of war pulling the homework out of her. And I used that RV as a reward system. So she loved mommy's little vintage camper. And I would say to her, you know what? If you get all this homework done, your girlfriend can come over and I'll make you popcorn and the two of you could go play in the RV and eat your popcorn in the RV and it became a fort. It was like a playhouse for them and it was special because I didn't let that happen all the time. When she wasn't in there with her girlfriend, I used it to wheedle things out of her. Hmm, she's not going to tell me this in the kitchen but let's get in mommy's camper and snuggle under the covers and tell stories and then, hey, what happened at school today? And all of a sudden that story would spill out. It was a great place to just have one-on-one -on -one time with each of my kids. And I used it for that purpose so many times. It also became date night, you know? We would go out there in the evening. My husband would call and say, I'm on my way home from work with a pizza grab a bottle of wine and meet me in the camper. Sometimes when you're at that age where your kids are teenagers and they have part-time jobs or places they have to be, you can't just take off and do whatever you want. So that just became our place to sit down at the table, enjoy a nice meal together without the doorbell ringing and kids coming and going and people looking for things. And it was a great place to just time out and reconnect. So. As a family, we use that so many times. Now, if you have a child in sports like so many of us did, the camper was a godsend to me. My youngest daughter was an equestrian, and God bless you parents with equestrian children, or soccer, travel soccer, or baseball, or anything that takes you away from your house from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., People thought I was crazy, but I hitched up that little camper of mine and I would haul it to the horse show, park it between all the big rigs because we didn't have our own horse. We had a rent a horse and a rent a trailer. So her horse was brought there by somebody else. 
but I would bring that little camper and it gave us a place to get out of the sun to just have our own food and not have to buy the food at whatever the horse show prices were. Also just to rest in between when her uh, particular shows were and a place to change. Also was a great place for me to sit with other moms and lament these long days. So if you have a child who is in any kind of sport and you want to bring that park it in the parking lot, what a lovely place it is to invite in the moms who just need to get out of the sun or take a break or a crying crabby kid or a place to take a nap for the other children who aren't in sports. So think about the ways in which you could use that RV of yours for family things that are close to home. Another thing I use my camper for all the time is just a home office. I mean, this became so clear during um, COVID. We were all locked in, right? And now my camper was in my driveway and I just had to get out of those four walls. I mean, when we all started, we were pitching in and doing our thing and we thought, okay, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, six months. Now we're a year into this thing and you're just going out of your mind. I used to go out to my camper in the driveway and I have black windows in mine. So people cannot see that you're sitting in it, but you have a lovely blue uh, view looking out. And I would put my front booth down and make it into a lounge, a day bed. And I would sit there with my laptop and I would watch my neighbors walking their dogs and just be out of the house. The great thing was I literally would be out of the house. I had my refrigerator going. I would turn turn on my propane stove in there, I would heat up leftovers. I treated it like I was on a day long camping trip. I would log off my computer, climb into my bed and take a nap in the middle of the day. And it was so great to get out of the house. So one of the things we know from Go RVing is that nearly 55% of RVers work while they're on the road. Most of us will use our computers when we are in our camper. So if you can use them out on the road, you can also use that in your driveway. Another great thing that I've noticed with the RVs, especially in the last couple of years, is the growing number of people who are using their RVs for weather emergencies. So a couple years ago in Texas, when they just had that really terrible ice storm, and this thing was, you know, not over in two days. There were people who didn't get heat and electricity back for two and three weeks. Now, that happened to us many times. I have noticed that there are people who live in neighborhoods that frequently lose electricity. Well, that was our old house. The electric uh, electricity would go off and our house was very rural. So we were the last people to get it back. Even though I had this big eight burner fancy Viking stove in the kitchen, it didn't let you override the electric starting mechanism. So I had the propane, but you couldn't take a match or a lighter and just override it and light that stove. I had no way to make coffee. Plus I had this big house and even though I had a fireplace, it was really hard to get warm in the house. And when we would have those days, I would head out to my little camper, make myself some coffee. The camper heated up in like five minutes. I was toasty warm with food, being able to cook, have coffee. And so having that RV in your driveway too is a great way to make use of it in emergencies. Another way I use it is during the holidays. So when you get the people, the spillover that come on the holidays and all the bedrooms, it is a great place to put your spill over guests. And I don't limit mine to people who are in my own driveway. I loan it to friends. Every June, my girlfriend Susan calls me up and says, the kids are all home for Father's Day. Can I borrow the camper? And I tow it over to her house and her kids have like a drawing straws to see who gets to sleep in Mrs. Pettit's camper. Everybody thinks it's their turn. She loves having it on her property. It takes some of the chaos out of the house and it's a great place for whoever has the newest baby or someone who needs a little quiet to be able to tuck themselves away. So you can use it as a guest house and you can loan it as a guest house, but also during the holidays, what a great place to have an additional kitchen. So when you've got all the meals going in your kitchen, but you're like, where am I putting the pie? You can't microwave a pie. No, you can't, but 
you can take it out to the camper and turn on your propane oven and cook that pie out there, but also make use of that extra refrigerator that you've got going on in there. So I just think when you make this investment in an RV, I want you to think about the fact that this is more than just a weekend opportunity to get away, although it is all that and a bag of chips because it is so fun to just hit that reset button. Uh, I leave my house on a Friday afternoon and when I come back on Sunday, even if I'm an hour away, I feel like a new person. But when I need that reset and I go out to my driveway and I just sit in that space that for me is like a healing, rejuvenating space that I love, that camper suddenly has more value. So if you're on the fence about whether or not you think there's value in buying an RV because maybe I'm just going to use it on weekends, I want you to think about all the other ways you can use an RV. This is a great time to buy RVs. I'm going to let you in on a little industry secret. All the RV dealerships ordered their new campers last fall. So everybody gets together in Elkhart and at the Hershey RV show and they see what's new and those dealerships come in and they order all of their new inventory. All the inventory sitting on their showroom floors now, they've got to clear out because the new stuff is coming in. So it's a great time of year to get out there and buy an RV. If you're on the fence about it, I hope these tips help you think of ways that you might use that RV other than a camping weekend. I want to say happy trails to all of you, and I hope you're out there having fun wherever your travels take you. This is Janine Pettit for Go RVing.